Today I'm going to teach you how to do this really cool underwater scene with a cool painting technique called bubble printing. It's really, really fun to do at home. So I'm going to teach you how to draw all of these different ocean creatures, but if it's too much for you, you can definitely make a work of art by just drawing one of the creatures and still trying out that painting technique if you'd like. To start our under the sea drawing, we're going to make the water line at the top. So I'm going to do this about two fingers down from the top. And I'm going to do kind of a wave design. So here's how I do it. I'm going to slowly go up on a diagonal, make a C shape, and then just repeat that. So up on a diagonal, letter C. Up on a diagonal, letter C. Up on a diagonal, letter C. And you can see that that makes a really cool waved line. For my bottom, I'm going to make a slow curved line for the sand. And if you want, you can do a couple little dots to make the sand look really grainy. Now I'm going to add some seaweed, and there's a couple different ways that you can draw seaweed, but I'm going to show you three ways that I like to draw it. So first, I like to do some skinny leaf shapes. And I make them all start from the same spot. So a skinny leaf shape is a curved line that comes to a point and then goes back down curve line to a point and go back down. Okay, I'm going to do another different kind of seaweed over here and this one's going to be curved lines. So I start by making a curved line, but I want it to be a little bit thicker than that. So I'm going to make a little kind of C shape on the top and then I'm going to follow this line down, trying to keep it the same width all the way. Just like that. And I'm going to do kind of the same thing as this one. I'm going to make a couple of those wavy lines come out of the same spot or close to it. Okay. The last one I'm going to put in the middle here. I'm going to start just like I did the last one. I'm going to start with that wiggly line. But instead of following that line to make it thicker, I'm actually going to cross it on purpose. So I'm going to pick up the line here, cross it, cross it, cross it. And you get that kind of a design. Do the same thing on here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just think it looks kind of cool. Awesome. So now that we have a couple different kinds of seaweed, I'm going to start filling my sea with creatures. So I'm going to show you a couple different creatures that you can draw, and then you can always move them around and put them in spots that you like, but remember we're trying to keep this picture balanced, so I don't want any big white spaces. And if you do have a big white space, fill it with a creature. Maybe you can think of how to draw one that I don't even include. So the first one I'm going to teach you is a simple fish. So we're going to start with a circle. We're going to add a triangle on the back for the tail, a different kind of triangle on the top for a fin. I like to add the little fin on the sides so that they can swim, and I do kind of a leaf shape for the fin. And I like to give my fish big puffy lips. And I'll add their eyeball by doing a circle with a circle on the inside. And that's it, a nice easy fish. If you want to add a design you can, but you can also just leave it plain. Since fish usually travel in schools of fish, which means more than one, I'm going to draw another fish over here. Same thing, start with a circle, triangle on the back, triangle on the top, a leaf shape fin, big puffy fish lips, and an eye. And if you want to make it look kind of girly, you could always add eyelashes. It's a little cartoon trick. And designs if you would like. Okay. The next creature I'm going to draw is a jellyfish. So I'm going to draw my jellyfish. I think hmm, maybe I'll go way up here in the other corner. 
So I'm going to start with kind of this rainbow shape, but it gets a little bit closer at the end. Then I'm going to draw some curved lines. I'm gonna go over that line a few times. Kind of looks like the jellyfish is wearing a tutu. Now jellyfish have lots of kind of strings that flow out of their body. So I am going to make some of them thick and some of them thin. So if I want to make a thick line, I just go back over it and follow that line. Making it a little bit thicker, trying to keep it the same width the whole way. And then I'm going to do a thin one, which is just the line of my pencil or marker. I'll do another thick one, following it back. And then maybe a thin one. A thick, I'm kind of doing an A, B pattern. Thick, thin, thick, thin. There. And jellyfish don't actually have faces, but since this is kind of a fun cartoony drawing, I'm gonna add a face to my jellyfish. And I'm actually gonna do some really cute eyes. So if you wanna make cute eyes, what you do is you do two circles on the inside of their eyes, a big one and a smaller one. And then you fill in the space around it. It gives them that kind of cute cartoony eye look. Oh, so cute. I'm gonna give them a little smile. I'm gonna draw a shark. Yikes, so terrifying. So for our shark, I'm gonna use this space right here. And if you can see, I'm kind of using my fingers to draw the outline of its body. So I'm gonna start thick, and I'm gonna slowly get thinner for where the tail is. So I'm gonna go kind of a curved line just like that. I'm making sure to leave enough room for my tail of my shark. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom, curve line and make it go closer on the end. So they kind of go far apart and then they taper together. Now I'm gonna draw my shark tail on the end, which looks a little different than the fish tails. So I'm gonna start with those two diagonal lines, very similar, but then I'm gonna connect them with a curved line. Oof, that looks scary, already looking like a shark. All right, on this end, I'm gonna make his big mouth. So I'm gonna make this one go a little bit further. And I'm gonna go in and out. Whoa, that shark has a very big mouth. That is scary. I'm going to add some really sharp teeth just by doing a zigzag line to make all these little triangles. I'm gonna give him a scary shark fin on top of his body. I'm gonna give him a little fin that he can use to swim on the side. So I'm kind of doing that leaf shape, but I'm not closing it on this end. I'm just leaving it open. I'm gonna give him an angry eye, because I think sharks are a little bit scary. So maybe this one's kind of scary. <laughs> and then to really make this look like a shark and not a fish or a whale, is we're gonna add some gills. Just by doing two curved lines. Oh my gosh, that is a scary shark. If you want, you can even draw a tiny little fish. Yikes, that is probably gonna be his lunch. Uh-oh, swim away. Those are some swimming lines. All right, the next creature I'm gonna teach you how to draw is an octopus. An octopus looks similar to a jellyfish, but it's a little bit different. So I'm gonna start with the kind of curved rainbow shape. And now instead of these um, thick and thin lines, octopus have these long tentacles. And I bet you know how many tentacles they have. Octopus have 10 tentacles. Whoa, 10 tentacles, oh my gosh, I'm going crazy. Octopus have eight tentacles. So we're gonna try to fit eight of them in, but if you don't, that's okay. You can always imagine that maybe your octopus is hiding its tentacles behind its head. So I'm going to do a curved line. I can kind of go in whatever direction I want and then come back to the body, follow it back to the body. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, Ooh, so close. Seven, eight, nine, 
seven. Ooh. Hmm. Let's see, I can hide one more in here. There we go. Eight tentacles. So that takes a little bit of practice to be able to draw these tentacles so that they all kind of look similar but going in different directions. So you might have to practice this with pencil a few times. And if your octopus just didn't turn out, you don't have to include it on your good copy. You can just skip it. All right, now if you want to make your octopus look really realistic, you can add some oval shapes on one side of the tentacles. And that kind of looks like it's suction cups. Now since tentacles kind of twist and turn, you don't need to show the tentacles or the suction cups on each tentacle. You can just do a couple in a spot. So maybe a few on that side, maybe a few on this side, because they're kind of twisting and turning. Take some patience for this part. I know it's very tempting to rush through it, but if you do, you're gonna have a really crazy, messy looking octopus. All right, now I'm gonna draw his face for this one. Maybe I'll make him excited. Draw a big smile, his tongue. Maybe I'm gonna make his eyes closed that he's so excited. You can add some eyelashes if you want, but if you don't want to, you don't need to. There. All right. The next creature I'm going to draw is a mermaid or merman. So I'm gonna draw it in this section here. I can tell that I have a good amount of space to fit a mermaid or merman. So I always start with the tail. And I want my tail to be shaped like a capital letter J. So I'm gonna start here and curl around. You See how that kinda of looks like a capital letter J? Now we also want our tail to go from thick to thin. So I'm gonna make these lines get closer together as I curve around. So I'm gonna start at the hips, go down, get closer and closer and closer and closer. There we go. Now I'm gonna add the fin, which is two leaf shapes, kind of put together like the letter V. If you'd like to add some fin details, you can if you'd like. I'm just adding some curved lines. And then at my top of my tail, I usually do two skinny leaf shapes to show where the tail joins the body. Now I'm going to draw my mermaid shirt or merman's shirt. You can make it whatever kind of shirt you'd like. I'm just going to do a tank top to make it nice and easy. I'm going to add their neck. And a little trick, I always had trouble drawing hands when I was younger. So what I would do is I would actually just do these curved lines, then it looks like they're tucking their hands behind their back. If you'd like to draw your hand not tucked behind your back, you could. Maybe I'll do this one out here. And another trick if you don't like drawing hands is make them hold something. I used to do this a lot, so I'm gonna make this one holding a clam. Maybe with a pearl on the inside. Ooh, so cool. That's another trick if hands are a little bit tricky for you. Now I'm gonna draw the head of my mermaid and ooh, I do not have too much space, I'll have to be a little bit careful. So I'm gonna draw a U shape for my head. I don't wanna connect the top because I'm gonna add hair. I'm gonna add my eyes and when I'm drawing people eyes, I do them a little differently. So I do these little rainbow shapes and I draw their eyes underneath. Helps make them look a little more realistic, but if you'd like to do some cartoony eyes, you totally could. I'm gonna draw their nose and a smile. And then I'm gonna add, for my mermaid, I want her hair to be kind of flowing in the water. So I'm gonna use some curved lines to kind of make it look like it's really flowing. If you want, you could put a flower in her hair. If you want, you could add some eyelashes. And of course, you can make this a boy. That would be so easy to do. You could even make him holding a trident. That would be cool. Add a little pearl necklace. Whatever details you want to add to your mer people, you definitely can. Sometimes I will add um, scales onto my tail by doing these little curved bumps. 
and you can do this too if you like the look of it. My trick is I always start at the middle of the bumps from the row before and try to hit just the tops and that way they line up nicely. Now I'm just going to add some finishing details. So I think it's, well first I should check my spacing. So I've got a little bit of a white space here, but that's not a big deal. But this space is feeling kind of empty to me. So maybe I should add another fish here. Or you could add whatever kind of detail you'd like. Maybe you want to draw a seahorse. Or a different sea creature that you about. I'm just going to draw a different kind of fish. So I'm just making them a little bit long and skinny instead of starting as a circle to kind of fill up this space. Yeah, I think that looks good. So now I can add some finishing details. And these are just for fun. You can get really creative at this part, but I'll show you kind of what I like to add. So first I'm gonna add a few bubbles. So you just draw some circles. And then I do a little line and a dot on one side to make it look like the shine or the shadow of the bubble. Looks kind of cute. I'm going to add maybe a clamshell in my sand. You could also add a starfish. Stars are a little bit tricky to draw, but if you practice it, it can be pretty fun. Another thing I used to really like adding to these drawings is a fishing rod, because I used to fish a lot with my grandpa. So I'm going to draw a fishing rod above the water as if someone is kind of sitting over here on the shore maybe, and this is just the end of their fishing rod that we see. Then it has a fishing line that's tied to the end and goes straight down. And then I'm going to draw the hook. So I start with a square, add a circle underneath, cut that circle in half, and add a hook. Now it kind of looks like a fishing rod, and if you'd like, you could also add a little wiggly worm on that hook. I wonder if these fish are going to take the bait. Alright, so now that I have colored everything except for the water with crayons, and I made sure to go over what I want to stay white with my white wax crayon. So like my shark's teeth, I did a little outline on the bubbles, um, any of the cartoon eyes I made sure to go over. And now I'm going to show you a really cool painting effect to add the water and kind of a cool textured way. For this painting technique, which is called bubble printing, you're going to need a bowl with some water in it. I filled it about halfway. You're going to need a straw, some dish soap, and some blue food coloring. So first, I'm going to add some dish soap to my water. About that much. So I'm just going to add a bunch of food coloring. Wow, that looks so cool. And you want it to be pretty dark. I'm going to mix that around with a paintbrush because that's what I have handy, but you can use whatever you have. A spoon would work fine. You just want to make sure that you break up the soap and all the food coloring is worked in there. If you try this out and you, it's not dark enough, you can always go back and add more food coloring. Okay, here we go. So I am going to use my straw kind of like a snorkel. You definitely do not want to be sucking in because if you breathe in you're gonna be drinking all the soapy water Blech! it is not gonna taste good so I'm gonna put my straw in the water and I'm gonna go and blow out like I'm blowing out the candles of birthday cake and you can see it's forming lots of bubbles I am going to take my picture and I am going to crush the bubbles with my picture and you'll start to see a little bit of a bubble effect. Mine still looks pretty light, so I'm gonna add more food coloring. Try that again. Crush the bubbles with your picture. Ooh, there we go. Now we can really see that bubble effect. So I'm gonna keep going to fill in all these white spots. <laughs> 